Were you there when they crucified my Lord? The Lord wishes. Oh, sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they crucified my Lord? Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? Were you there when they nailed him to a tree? Sometimes it causes me to tremble, tremble, tremble. Were you there when they nailed him to the tree? merciful God, creator of us all. You call us to reverence your divine image and likeness in our neighbor. Yet the equality of all your children has not been fully acknowledged, and Christians have been and continue to be guilty of social sin. As we reflect on these stations of the cross, may the witness of Black Catholic women touch our hearts, minds, and souls that through their Christ-like example, you might call us to conversion, reconciliation, and, re and renewed hope for racial harmony, equality, and justice. We ask this in the name of Jesus, through whose life, ministry, death, and resurrection, we have been set free. Amen. The first station, Jesus is condemned to death. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your love, you redeem the world. As we reflect on this first station, we call to mind the witness of Martha Jane Chisley Tolton. Like Jesus, Martha Tolton was unjustly condemned. Born into slavery, she was condemned to a life of forced servitude, indignity, and abuse. But just as Jesus walked a long and grueling road for us, so too did Martha by fleeing slavery on a farm in Missouri to freedom in Quincy, Illinois, with her three children, one of whom, Augustus, would become the first African-American priest to publicly identify as Black. Let us pray. God of freedom, we thank you for the witness of Martha Tolton and the countless other mothers who risked their lives to gain freedom for their children. Give us the hope to envision 
a world where all your holy children live in true and complete freedom, regardless of how long and grueling the road to reality may be. Amen. The second station, Jesus is made to carry his cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeem the world. As we reflect on this second station, we call to mind the, the witness of Mother Mary Lange. In 1829, Mother Lange founded the Oblate Sisters of Providence, the first community of women religious of African descent. Throughout her tenure as Superior General, Mother Lange carried many crosses, not the least of which was guiding this historic and prophetic sisterhood in its early days, despite poverty, racism, and other untold hardships. Let us pray. God of justice, we thank you for the witness of Mother Lange. Give us the strength and perseverance to work for justice despite the insults, difficulties, and burdens that will surely come our way. Amen. The third station, Jesus falls the first time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeem the world. A reading from a statement made last year by the National Black Sisters Conference declaring that the US Catholic Church is still a racist institution. The voice of the church in America is for the most part eerily silent when it comes to the racial unrest in this country. Very few bishops have spoken out in support of the peaceful demonstrations by the Black Lives Matter movement. Very few have called out the racism and hypocrisy of many white Catholic priests and laity. Sadly, the leadership of the church is not addressing the slaughter of black lives in the streets so, of our city. And protect as a pro-life issue. Every January, tens of thousands of Catholics gather in the nation's capital to demonstrate against abortion. Will we ever see the day when tens of thousands of Catholics will gather to protect to protest the sin of racism, which aborts the lives of millions of people of color every day in this country. If we as Catholics are to truly open wide our hearts, we must hold up the light of Christ against the sin of racism. We must speak the truth not only in love, but we must speak the truth forthrightly about the complicit systemic and structural racism that continues to exist in the American Catholic Church today. Let us pray. God of solidarity, for generations we have witnessed the degradation of people of color for the purposes of social and economic gain. With contrite hearts, we acknowledge that we are guilty of the sin of racism. We did not and have not done enough. Forgive us and guide us toward reconciliation and restoration of the one human family. We ask this relying on your unfailing mercy. Amen. The fourth station, Jesus meets his mother. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeem the world. As we reflect on this fourth station, we call to mind the witness of Mother Theodore. In 1916, 
Elizabeth Williams founded the Handmaids of the Most Pure Heart of Mary when the Georgia State Legislature proposed a bill that would outlaw the instruction of Black children by white teachers. Taking the name Mother Theodore, she became the congregation's first superior, superior general. The congregation's name was chosen to inspire members of the congregation to care for and love their neighbors with the same zeal that Mary had for her son, Jesus. The bill never passed and the congregation moved to New York where the sisters founded St. Benedict's Day Nursery School, early childhood education programs, Catholic elementary schools, an after school program, food pantries, a senior citizen center and summer camps. Let us pray. Mother of us all, we thank you for the witness of Mother Theodore. May we always see others first and foremost as your children worthy of our love and zealous care. Amen. The fifth station. Simon of Cyrene carries the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your love, you redeem the world. As we reflect on this fifth station, we call to mind the witness of Sister Cora Billings, she recently wrote, I have freely given my life to service through the Sisters of Mercy. My great grandfather, on the other hand, had no choice regarding his service. He worked as a slave owned by the Society of Jesus. Despite her family's history with the church and her own experiences of racism, Sister Cora has willingly served the people of God often breaking racial and religious barriers along the way. When asked how she can serve the very church that enslaved her great grandfather, Sister Cora says, although this part of our Catholic history might make some people turn away from the church, this knowledge makes me more determined to stay and to work for greater equality for people in the church in the world today. In 1965, she became Philadelphia's first Black religious sister of mercy. In 1990, she became the first Black nun to be installed as a pastoral coordinator at St. Elizabeth's Catholic Church in North Richmond, Virginia. Today, Sister Cora continues to serve as a member of the anti-racism transformation team for the Institute of the Sisters of Mercy of the Americas. Let us pray. God of equality, we thank you for the witness of Sister Cora Billings. Give us determination to serve the cause of equality for people in the church and the world today. Amen. Amen. The sixth station, Veronica wipes the face of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeemed the world. As we reflect on this sixth station, we call to mind the witness of Sister Antona Ebo. Upon hearing the reports of civil rights protesters being beaten on Bloody Sunday, Sister Antona remembers thinking, if I didn't have this habit on, I would be down there with those people. Later, she would remark, it turned out that the habit was what got everyone's attention very quickly. 
because nuns had not been seen doing anything like that before. When she arrived in Selma, Sister Antona Ibo was the first African-American nun to march in the struggle for civil rights. The Reverend L. L. Anderson, pastor of Selma's Tabernacle Baptist Church remarked, for the first time in my life, I am seeing a Negro nun. For him, Sister Antona was living proof to the officials in Alabama and those who had beaten the protesters that in his words, you don't have to be white, be holy. The next day, Sister Antona's face appeared on the front page of the New York Times sending shockwaves through the nation that a nun would join the protest in Selma. Let us pray. God, in whose image we are wonderfully made, we thank you for the witness of Sister Antona Ebo. May those among us in positions of power, privilege, honor, or reverence use them to advance the cause of justice. And may we always see the face of Jesus in the lives of all, especially those who suffer. Amen. The seventh station, Jesus falls the second time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your love you redeem the world. As we reflect on this station, we name the church's denial of LGBTQ plus persons as a weight the body of Christ now bears. The leadership of the church has failed in their mission to recognize the dignity of all human persons by rejecting the lives and experiences of those in the queer community. The CDF's recent statement saying God does not bless sin gravely and viciously contrasts the church's social teaching on gay persons, human rights for respect, compassion, and love. The church's homophobia causes even more harm to queer queer persons of color, and all those who live in homophobic households, communities, and societies. Let us pray. God of love, we decry the harm our church's leadership has inflicted upon our LGBTQ plus siblings around the world. They are rejecting beautiful people and their gifts that are created in your image. May we transform our hearts and the hearts of others to recognize this injustice, ignite our souls to raise the voices of our neighbors in the queer community so that a church of justice, solidarity, and love is finally realized. Amen. The eighth station, Jesus meets the women of Jerusalem. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeem the world. As we reflect on this eighth station, we call to mind the witness of Sister Martin de Porres Gray, now Dr. Gray. Sister Martin de Porres Gray, was the only woman present when more than 60 black Catholic clergy, clergy members gathered to discuss the racial crisis in the country 14 days after the assassination of Dr. Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Encouraged by their vision and action, she called together over 150 black Catholic women religious to acknowledge and to confront the racism they had experienced in both the church and society. Through the course of a week-long gathering, 
The sisters became convinced that, in the words to Martin, since white racism is behind the race problem, then we, as black religious women, have to help white clergy and our white sisters understand white racism so they, in turn, can teach their people the truth. Sister Martin would serve as the first president of the National Black Sisters Conference as a result of the gathering. Let us pray. God of community, we thank you for the witness of Patricia Gray. Give us the courage to confront those in our communities, even our families, friends, colleagues, and peers, when they perpetuate systems of injustice and oppression by their attitudes, thoughts, words, or actions. Amen. The ninth station, Jesus falls the third time. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeem the world. As we reflect on this station, we name the church's sexual abuse and cover-up, which crushes the body of Christ. The horrific and predatory violence inflicted by church leaders is a reality that can never be dismissed or forgotten. Victims and survivors continue to bravely step forward to tell their stories while clergy prioritize their power. Too often, the desperation to retain power buries the stories and experiences of victims. They get left behind while they suffer from the trauma of abuse. Let us pray. God of healing, we cry out for those who experience the violence and trauma of sexual abuse. Those who have led your church while abusing your children defile your name and mission. May we bring the abusers to justice and accountability. Most importantly, may we help the victims and survivors find refuge, healing and justice. Call us to compassionately listen to the stories of abuse so that we may walk in solidarity with our siblings who survived this violence. Amen. The tenth station. Jesus is stripped of his garments. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your love you redeem the world. As we reflect on this 10th station, we call to mind the witness of Mother Henriette de Lille. In the mid-1830s, despite laws forbidding interracial associations, Henriette quietly organized a small interracial community the Sisters of the Presentation, to care for the sick, help the poor, and educate free and enslaved children and adults in New Orleans. In 1842, with official recognition as a religious association, the community changed its name to the Sisters of the Holy Family, the second order of Black women religious the sisters would establish the first and oldest Catholic nursing home in the United States, nurse the poor through the yellow fever epidemic and care for the wounded during the Civil War. Because of racist opinions about the social status of black women, the sisters were forbidden to wear a habit by the Archbishop of New Orleans until 1872. And so the women wore a simple blue dress as their religious garb. Mother Henriette, 
who died in 1862 would never wear the habit. Let us pray. God of all people, we thank you for the witness of Henriette de Lille and the sisters of the Holy Family. Restore in us a desire for community that we may embrace our diversity, stand in solidarity with one another and see all of humanity as one holy human family, amen. The 11th station, Jesus is nailed to the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeem the world. As we reflect on this 11th station, we call to mind the witness of all women of color who have suffered cruelty and injustice in their pursuit of making the church truly Catholic and truly universal. Dr. Shannon B. Williams tells us, long before there were black priests in the United States, there were black Catholic sisters. Black sisters renounced an outside world that deemed all black people immoral and provided a powerful refutation to the insidious racial and sexual stereotypes used by white supremacists to justify African-American exclusion from US citizenship rights and the ranks of religious life in the church. Though practically invisible in the annals of American and Catholic history, Black sisters also played critical and oftentimes leading roles in the fight to dismantle racial barriers in the US church. As the earliest champions of Black Catholic education and priests, Black sisters forced an often ambivalent white hierarchy to acknowledge their African-American constituency and adhere to canon law and the church's creed of universal Christian brotherhood. In doing so, Black sisters challenged the nation and the church to live up to the full promises of democracy, Catholicism, and justice for all. Let us pray. Eternal God, we thank you for the witness of these women. May we find in them the inspiration and strength to continue the unfinished work of eradicating from our church and society the racism, sexism, and every form of prejudice and discrimination that continues the economic, social, physical, and spiritual crucifixion of our siblings. Amen. The 12th station, Jesus dies on the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeem the world. For this 12th station, we offer a moment of silent reflection to ponder this question. What racist attitudes, beliefs, and practices am I being called to die to?
the 13th station. Jesus' body is removed from the cross. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your love, you redeem the world. For this 13th station, we call to mind the witness of Sister Thea Bowman. In one of her last interviews, having lived with cancer for nearly six years, Sister Thea said, I do not try to make sense of suffering. I try to make sense of life. Drawing inspiration and insight from African-American spirituals, which were so much a part of her life and ministry, Sister Thea lived life fully and purposefully a champion of incorporating African-American spirituality and Black sacred songs in the life of the Catholic Church, Sister Thea challenged Catholics of all backgrounds to see their unique cultures, histories, and heritages as reason for celebration and not cause for discrimination. During her 1989 address to the National Conference of Catholic Bishops, Bauman began her remarks by singing, sometimes I feel like a motherless child. She went on to say, what does it mean to be black and Catholic? It means that I come to my church fully functioning. That doesn't frighten you, does it? I come to my church fully functioning. I bring myself, my black self, all that I am, all that I have, and all that I hope to become. I bring my whole history, my tradition, my experience, my culture, my African-American song and dance and gesture and movement and teaching and preaching, healing and responsibility as gift to the church. Let us pray. God of welcome and inclusion, we thank you for the witness of Sister Theo Bowman. Help us to embrace each other's giftedness. We ask this, relying on your unfailing mercy. Amen. The 14th station, Jesus's body is laid in the tomb. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you because by your love, you redeem the world. As we reflect on this 14th station, we call to mind the witness of Dr. Shannon D. Williams. As a doctoral student, Shannon D. Williams stumbled on the subject of black nuns when researching the history of her own, her own mother, who in 1972 became the first African-American woman accepted into Notre Dame University. In the midst of her research, Williams came across the 1968 creation of the National Black Sisters Conference. She reached out to some of the early members and the letters started pouring in. They said, we've been waiting for you. We're so glad someone's trying to tell our story. The topic became the basis of her doctoral research. When her upcoming book, Subversive Habits, Black Nuns and the Struggle to Desegregate Catholic America after World War I is released, it will be the first to examine the lives and struggles of Black Catholic sisters in the 20th century United States. Without Williams' hours of research and interviews, this important part of Catholic history and the incredible witness of so many women could have been buried forever, completely forgotten with the passage of time. Let us pray. God of memories, 
we thank you for the witness of Shannon De Williams. May we always remember and learn from our church's history of racism and discrimination so that together we may journey from death to new life. Amen. The Station at the Tomb. Mary Magdalene arrives at the tomb of Jesus. We adore you, O Christ, and we praise you, because by your love, you redeem the world. After Jesus' arrest, the men were, who were his apostles and friends abandoned and betrayed him. Yet he was not alone. The women who followed Jesus bravely accompanied him in any way they could during his passion. They watched him carry the cross, die a gruesome death, and buried his body despite their own threats of persecution and death as his followers. Even after Jesus's burial, they continued to care for him as Mary of Magdala and other women arrived at the tomb to anoint his body. These women were first-hand witnesses to the world's salvation because of their steadfast faith and courage to continue to follow Jesus while their religious community shattered. So for the women in the church today, we can look to the women before us and be empowered by their stories to continue the work for justice and equity within the church. Let us pray. Mother Creator and all the women who came before us, guide us today as we worship and minister in this church. We ask for the courage to fight to lift the voices of women, the love to accept our transgender sisters, the humility to recognize how we harm our sisters of color, and the wisdom to lead our church into one that Jesus envisioned. Amen. Recognizing that we are all one human family, let us pray together the words that Jesus taught us. Creator God, mother and father to the one human family, hallowed be your name. May your reign come, may your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us as we forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Broken into 
love crucified for me and for you. Eyes that won't see, ears that won't hear, lips that deny the friend once so dear. Slowly he turns and captures your heart, then passes on to Calvary to die. Behold the cross of Christ in our midst. All those who bear Christ's wounds in their sides, suffering for Christ of mercy and peace. Signs of the kingdom on Calvary Street. Behold the cross on which was hung Life's very Lord, God's darling one, Mary's own babe, so cold and so still, helpless before her on Calvary Hill.